Hello, I'm Ellie, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm an artist. For the past few years, I've been focusing on growing as a photographer, working on personal and commercial projects. I've also been exploring light field photography with my red hydrogen phone. Separately, I do many different forms of digital artwork using tools like Photoshop, Procreate, and Illustrator. When I'm not doing digital work, I love to make physical collages that in the before times I shared at local fairs and festivals. Cue the pandemic. I found myself with a lot more time on my hands and decided to start learning Blender in June of 2020. Dreaming in Andrew Price's voice for all of summer 2020, I learned the basics of sculpting and modeling, smitten by Ian Hubert's fantastic vocal range, and cyberpunk dystopias similar to the one the United States is barreling towards. I learned the basics of photo scanning, CG Matter helped me set up my first uh, HDRI, and Arendelle in November introduced me to the beauty and challenge of vector displacement and also made basic texturing a lot more approachable. Okay, great. I've amassed a fair amount of basic blender skills. I made a donut, I made a cookie, I made a glitched out version of my face, but what art had I made? I kind of felt like I was stuck in tutorial hell. So I thought, with these basic blender skills, how can I start making my own art? Hence this project. If you find yourself in a similar spot as me, perhaps this is a, this is a project you can do as well, using your own 2D art as a reference point. Okay, great, let's jump in. I chose this photo collage I made in June to recreate in 3D because one, I really like this collage, two, it was the last 2D collage I made before jumping into 3D, and three, honestly, the main elements looked easy to model and the composition not too complex. First, I modeled all the objects and arranged them to match the layout of the original by importing the original collage JPEG as a reference image. Next, I added materials to all the objects. For the banana, I added a slightly cartoonish procedural texture I made in November. This texture is available on my Patreon. For the lemon, I played around with the Voronoi texture and inverted it. Because the lemon is a bit smaller in the frame and the texture is not as iconic as the banana, I was okay with a simple mode setup, which worked in this case, but might not in other projects. As for the light base and the base of the chapstick, I simply used high gloss plastic from the built-in materials library. This is okay to do sometimes. And as for the light itself, I was able to just use the principal BSDF and crank up the emission. More interestingly, perhaps, I UV wrapped the original 2D image of the chapstick onto the modeled chapstick lid. And finally, for the rug, it, I simply imported the image as a plane. Though, I did try to add a particle system to make the, the rug look real. Shout out to Decoded, whose rug section on how to make an interior was supremely helpful. The particle system looked cool, but for this piece, the rug just absorbed too much light and looked way too dark. I ended up leaving it as a plane and turning up the gloss a bit, actually. This was a stylistic decision. Because this exercise is about seeing the render with a more artistic eye, it's good to note these moments to ourselves. After adding the materials, it was time to import my, let's call it a leaf bush scan. I did the scan back when the leaves were greener. I live in the north, winter is always coming. At the time of scanning, I used an awesome app called Displayland, which worked on my Android. Insert praise hand emoji. Displayland is no longer around, but now that iOS devices have LiDAR, LiDAR scanning with an iPhone or iPad works really well too. In order to match the background of the 2D image, I duplicated the scan until it filled the space making sure to rotate the bush so it didn't look repetitive. I also moved the bushes slightly along the depth axis to add even more dimension and distract the viewer from the fact that, uh, shh, the bushes are the same. As you can see, there are small orange flowers in the original collage. I modeled my own version of these flowers and did some texture painting to match the color. 
I didn't bother too much with modeling an exact replica of the flowers because in the original piece, they really serve as a kind of visual pop. And in fact, they aren't really in focus anyway. Once finished with this, I embedded these flowers into the bushes. This is a really important step because otherwise the flowers will look disjointed and separate from the leaves, especially because the leaves are more photorealistic than the flowers. Now onto the lighting. Hopefully this will be in lightning. Haha. <laughs> this part was particularly tricky because the original collage is comprised of two separately lit scenes. The background photo of the foliage and the foreground photo of the objects, which were lit on a table with studio lighting before being masked and cut out. Therefore, the lighting in the full composition of the original collage is unrealistic and inconsistent. Here, we could render out two separate, separately lit scenes and then do some masking, post-processing, and Photoshop, but instead, I took this as a chance to play around with the lighting setup and just try to make it look cooler in CG. Here, I got to ask myself, what should this CG version of the artwork feel like? How can I light it so it feels like its own revitalized version? I didn't get to experiment here as much as I would have liked, but I ended up trying to get some similar shadows to the original, using spotlights and then using area lights to bring out the textures in the backdrop. Last up, I played around with the photographer add-on, experimenting with various depths of field, appropriate focal length, and exposure, which allowed me to reimagine the lighting and composition in a whole new way. These settings are pretty freaking exciting as a photographer to play around with in CG. Something to remember, the settings are important to get right. Any edits and posts will affect a smaller amount of data than the photographer might be used to. Basically, there is less post-production clay to mold in separate programs. After rendering out, I did some minor color edits in Photoshop. The original collage is really quite saturated, so to make them look, look like a little mini-series, I thought it best to make sure the colors were similar. Cue a pretty aggressive warming filter. Also, doing a little sharpening helps the final render look good on the gram and the web. And that's the complete walkthrough! I learned so much in the process of doing this project and learned equally much making a video about it. Again, if you're feeling like you're in a similar spot in your Blender journey or your Maya journey or what have you, I found this exercise very fulfilling and satisfying. At the end, I sort of believed myself a little when thinking, man, am I a 3D artist? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to try to do a video every month this year. Again, if you'd like to support my work and have access to the assets in this video, head on over to my Patreon. Stay at it, kids.